what is the important part is that you have a control case here. Another thing that is interesting is what is happening if you have this case that you have at that point. Guy, did you start videotaping my screen? Yeah, I just started recording. Good. That means that the problem does not have a solution. And it may happen many times. I want you to play a little bit of time to see what is happening when you do not have a solution. Here you can see the coefficients that you have. And you cannot have a solution because a given situation can alter the problem. And then you can have a solution. Is between being non-feasible and feasible. The reason that you do not have a solution is because given variables may tell you that something cannot happen. And I don't think that during the summer we have a lot of time to explore that case with non-solution. When you don't have a solution, you get information here that the problem is unbounded, which means you need to have a line to bound the problem, and the problem can be bounded in two different ways. If the problem is to find out a maximum, maximize a problem, then you need to bound it from above. In other words, when you want to find the maximum, you want to go as high as possible to the top, and you need to have a ceiling that restricts you from above. If the problem is minimum, you need to go down as possible, and therefore you need to have something that can restrict you from the bottom. If this doesn't happen, then the computer gets crazy and does not give you a solution. It tells you that is not bounded in that case. I would like you to look at this graph here. That says that this particular constraint is redundant. This is exactly what we have in the problem that we discussed yesterday, and we will keep discussing it today. What is the meaning of redundancy? We have something that is higher up, and whatever is higher up has the resources that we do not use, but we have them there, unused resources. And this is exactly what we get in some of the cases in the problem that we had to discuss yesterday. Actually, I take the books that we use and I'm scrutinizing the problems they have to find out the logical problems of the problems that are used in textbooks. Some of the cases are because of redundant constraint, as it is here. But some other cases is because the people know math, but they don't know reality. And you have, for example, a problem about mixing material to make neckties. And actually, you do not mix material. You use different type of a fabric. You get a fabric that is 100% silk or 100% cotton or given percentage between uh, cotton and polyester, so on, so forth. So you, you need to know how you can make ties, you can make clothes, you can make shoes, you can make beer, you can make wine, etc. Many of the guys that they write books do know the math, but don't know the specifics of the production process that have to deal with reality. As a result, some of the problems you can find in books are not logical. 
Mathematically, they stand. Logically, they don't. You are a business person. You need to work about logic. And logic does not need a computer or electricity. You can use logic without having anything. And that's why I want Zaklin and everybody else to be relaxed. And you need the computer. The computer can help you to do a lot of things. But you can do also a lot of things without having a computer. <coughs> you cannot be able to do the calculations. You cannot be able to have a numerical solution, but you can have a feeling of what is happening. One problem is what is invisible. And one thing is to make a distinction between feasibility and infeasibility. And a line or a curve makes a cutting point between what is feasible and what is not feasible. We said that before, we review it again. We have here Tennis, who was not in class at the time we said it. And we said something that is important. What is a line? A line is infinite amount of points that are defined as long as we have two points. These two points are the points we put on the axis, which means we know when x is 0 and y has a value. Oops. I lost the picture I had x is 0 and y has value, x is 0 and y has value, we are at this point. If y is 0 and x has value, we are at this point. These two points define a line. A line goes further, up and down. This is only in the positive area. It doesn't have always to be in the positive area, but by having a line, we define two things. One thing we define is what is on the line. That's when we operate in full efficiency. In other words, we utilize all the resources. If we are below the line, we do not utilize all the resources. We are not fully efficient. We have something unused. But we cannot be above the line because we do not have resources for that. We need to look at what is happening to the segments. If the problem has a slope, that the line of the objective function has exactly the same slope with one of the lines of my restrictions or requirements, then I can have multiple solutions, not only one solution. Or in other words, I cannot have unique solution. When I, when I don't have a unique solution, Mathematica tells me that I do not get a solution because I need a unique solution. At that point, the slope of the objective function, 2 over 2, and the slope of this line here, 1 and 1, is the same. I do not have a unique solution. The Mathematica does not solve the problem. I put a lot of questions, a lot of comments here. You can go whenever you have time and you can read it. Whenever you don't have time, you skip it. You go on, you practice it, you move on. And we go to the different problems we are facing. The reason I wanted to talk to a given problem is I'm facing this situation here. And yesterday, I went and I talked to the problem 
This is what we did today, problem 2.24. The reason that I wanted to do this problem is very simple. It is in nature exactly the same as the first problem we discussed. The first problem we were producing two products, tables and chairs, in two different processes, carpentry and painting. Here we produce two products, model Y and model B, in three different processes. And I want you to put it in your mind. A product defines columns. A process defines rows. And this gives me how big the problem may be. If I have two or three products, I can graph it. If I have more than three, I cannot graph it. But if I learn how to play around with two or three that I can graph, and two is better than three because I have two dimensional graphs, in these two dimensional graphs, I can learn everything that I need to know for as many products as I have and I want to practice this particular case. Lesson number one, what do you need to know? You need to know what is your problem. And you need to know all the information about the problem. You don't need to know some of it. You need to know all of it. And as you know all of it, what you actually know is more than whatever you have in this problem. So what you have given is your explicit information. From whatever you have, you know more. And you need to be able to find the additional information. And this is a general principle I would like you to know. Because if you go to any particular business setting, they will give you whatever they would like you to have. And they will never give you everything. From whatever they give you, the data, the information that you will have, you need to assess additional information that they will not pass to you. And even that may not be enough, you would like to know more. Therefore, you can be able to make certain assumptions. And if you make certain assumptions based upon the validity of the assumption, you will know more. And I gave you an example. What example they gave you? Usually the problem tells you how many hours you have there available. If you assume that you have normal case, you find out how many people you need to hire in that case. And if you want to solve the problem, you need to see what is exactly the issue that you have with the problem. How do you go on? One thing is to do whatever everybody does. And whatever everybody does is to solve the problem. You go on and you solve the problem. You set up the problem, you put shift tender, or if you do it with Excel or you do it with any other software, you solve out the problem. You find out what is the solution. If you find out what is the solution, and you know that this is your solution, green, most of the people stop. And from that point on, I start working and I want you to start working from that point on that you have a solution. Professors and students say, okay, I have a solution. This is my solution. And here is gonna be my question. Why do you get this solution? And how do you move on having that solution? The easiest way to explore it is to make a graph out of it. The graph that you want to make is to see what is the feasible area. 
when you go on and you take the feasible area and you want to make the graph, you have to utilize the command to the region plot. Now you do it because you have Mathematica, you have computers and you have electricity. In the 70s, I didn't have any of the above, only electricity, but I couldn't use it. I could make the graph on my own. Every line gives you one equation. Every equation gives you one line. It doesn't matter what is the complexity of the equation, you can be able to do it. If things are not linear, and now I'm going to make something for a change, but if things are a curve, you can have a different case. What do I have here? The B is in the square. What do I have here? The variable A. If the variable A is a square root, I have a different case, a different graph. Mathematica takes what is more complicated in mathematics and makes it easier for you as long as you know what is happening. Here I open one big thing that you need to work on your own later on. What if things are not straight lines? Forget it. I'm going to send you a video about art to know what is a straight line. A straight line is a local approximation of any curve that you have, and that's why we use it. A straight line does something that is very important in a very simple and powerful way. A straight line is two points, but they cut a space and they separate what is feasible from what is not feasible. And we have here perceptions that some of the time are true and some of the times are not true. One stupid perception is that math is difficult. Math is simple. Another stupid perception is that if you are good in math, you cannot be good in communication. It is also not sense. You need to be able to practice both and both are extremely simple. What is this? Yesterday, Damien asked, what is the line? This is my wiring line. I see it here. What is the wiring line? The wiring line is based upon this particular coefficient. What this coefficient can do? This coefficient define what is the line. And I want to know what is happening with the case. If I need the same amount of hours for both. The graph is different. <laughs> Why the graph looks like this? It's supposed to be 45 degrees. Is this a 45 degrees line? The slope is 3 over 3. It's 45 degrees. Is this a 45 degrees line? No, it, it looks more like a 60, 30. But it is 45 degrees. That's what it is. Why it looks like 60, 30? Because the scale is important. And if you want really to see what it is, you need to put the scale in an equivalent terms. So if you put the scale that you want to graph this from 100 to 100, then the line is what it's supposed to look like. But if you put in a different scale, then the line looks differently. I didn't change anything about my equation. The only thing I change is the scale. 
but scale is extremely important. What is it? From where do we see things? Is the Earth's sphere or is the Earth flat? From my window, I see the Earth being flat. When Armstrong in 68 went to the moon, he saw the Earth as sphere. If I have a different scale, I see the graph differently. If my scale changes, I will see the graph differently. But what it changes is not the slope, but how I see the slope. And I see the slope from the axis that I have and from what I graph. Whenever we learn, all the books give me the axis in a very proportional way. And I got used to see everything the way that it's supposed to be. But when I learn that I have a myopia and at the same time I have an astigmatism, I start paying attention. And as I want to pay attention, I want to wear the appropriate glasses. These glasses are for me to see this screen. If I put these glasses, I cannot see that screen. I can see only what I can read closer. And if I can put the other glasses that I don't remember where I put it, I see only far away. What do I want you to know? I want you to know that the slope is dependent upon these particular coefficients. Not how things look like, but what things are. And I don't need a graph for that. I need to know what it is. And I'm learning a lesson. It is important to see how things look, but it's also important how things are. And what is important is not the looks, but the nature of the material. And if I have a line that two coefficients are exactly the same, they give me a slope that is 45 degrees. It doesn't matter what is the size of the coefficient, maybe two over two. The line has the same slope, but now the line has a different position. I don't see all the line. Why? Because my axis is up to 100. If I make it up to 200, I can see a straight line. What did I do? I proportionally change two things. I proportionally change the slope, I decrease it, and I move up. And I proportionally increase the, slot, the axis, the line moved down. Are we comfortable about that case? Which means if I make the axis smaller, if I make the axis smaller, I can still see the same thing, but I can see it as I don't see any line here. Why? Because I'm far below what is the line. I can start increasing it. I can start increasing it. Now I see a portion of the line. I don't see all the line. I can start increasing it. I can see a portion of the line. Now I can see a line. I can see a slope. I will ask, what is this slope? Damien is going to say 45 degrees. Is it 45 degrees? Yes. Do I want you to see a 45 degrees all the time if I'm in business? Do I want you to see a 45 degrees all the time if I'm in business? 
Uh, no, because we should be able to change uh, the scaling. Yeah, the depending reason on that I don't want you to see everything is because I want to work in a proprietary case and I want to go on and give you a true case, but in a disturbed portion that we do not understand. And when we do things, this is what we do in business. We do not lie, but we present it in the way we like to present it. But this line is a 45 degrees line. And I want you to know, can you tell me that is not a 45 degrees line? If you know, you pay attention to these numbers, you know that it's 45 degrees line. If you want to know why this is happening is because the X axis is much larger than the Y axis. Do you want to have misrepresentation of what is happening? You can change it. You can make it even different, but that does not change reality. This changes perception. Do we want our competitors to get a clear picture of what is happening? No. Do we want to lie? We shouldn't. But how we present things are extremely important of what is happening. Do we get this lesson? We do. We move on. What is happening here? What is happening here? We have two lines. Before yesterday, Damien said, which one is what? The first equation is graphed first. The second equation is graphed after. When we graph them separately, we know which one is what. We have the wiring and we have the drilling line. What did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? We make some changes. This was three and this was one. Everything else was something that we had. It. We said this needs to be the same. We have eight hours for five days for seven people. You click it. You have the lines here. What is happening here? This is the case. What do I want to pay attention? Do I have my graph in the same axis? No. You see, the vertical axis is much larger than the horizontal axis. As a result, that gives you a distortion. What do I want to do? I want to put everything for me in the same axis so I would know exactly what is happening. I solved the problem before. Why did I get a solution of 120 model type B, because I was at that position here, 120 of model type B. What is happening? The drilling does not have anything in common with the wiring. What is the problem? And you don't need a computer to tell me what is the problem. You need to be able to walk into any business and find out what is the problem. Do I have a problem? This is your issue. The problem is not to find a solution and move on. That's for your competitors. Let them stay there. It doesn't matter if they graduate from MIT. But the problem is that drilling has resources 
that are above whatever wiring has. And you need to have a crossing point between these two. In order to have a crossing point, as managers, you can be able to do two things. One thing you can do is what we said yesterday, but that's not so easy. If this, that means productivity, can be managed that you can double your productivity. If you double your productivity, that means that the three would be half, it can be 1.5. What is happening? Now, you have a solution to the problem that is different from the solution that you had before. Before the solution was here, you were producing only model B. Now you may be able to produce model A and B. You can move from one point to the other point. What do you have to do? You have to know two things. One, you need to know what is your feasible area. I can go here and I can have only the feasible area. Now I do not see all the lines. I want you to see the lines. If I go back to the previous case, I see what is my feasible area, what I don't see. I don't see that there is another line here that is much higher up which the book calls it redundant. Why redundant? Because the drilling does not allow me to do. I want to see the two lines. Fine, you learn how to use Mathematica. It's not a big thing. You put a comma instead of that. You click it and you have the other case. Now you see what does not appear before. And you realize this is your wiring and this is your drilling. What you really need to do. Can you drastically have impact to the slope? Can you drastically have impact to the slope? That means, is it so easy to manage productivity? And the common sense answer is no. That's very difficult. You can do it, but you can do it a little bit differently. So what you can do, you can increase the productivity by how much? By 10%. You can increase the productivity by 10%, which means that you will multiply it by 90%. You can increase the productivity by 10%. <coughs> Small increase of productivity do not make big change. Forget about it. You cannot do anything with your productivity. What people can do? I go to hotels and I need to have the rooms clean and I need to have people who can go on and clean the rooms. What Robert has actually to do, he does not need computers for that. He needs to have common sense. He needs to know how many rooms need to be clean from what time to what time. He needs to know how many ladies can clean the rooms. And he needs to know how much time it takes to one lady or two ladies to clean the room. And he needs to put it all together. Does he make calculations for that? He might, or he may not. The grandfather of my friend that had 
a small hotel didn't know anything about calculations. But now my friend that has a five-star hotel in three different areas, he has his computer and he calculate everything. What he does? He cares about the ladies that they clean the room better and faster. They increase the productivity. But mainly, if he has a lot of rooms to be cleaned, he hires more ladies. And if he doesn't have that much of of occupancy, he uses less people. And we can be able to do that. This is the reality that you are facing as long as you know what is the problem. And if you have the complete computer, you can play around and you don't need really to pay attention. What do you need? You need eight people or you need six people. What is happening? You move the opposite way. You don't need six people here. You need 10 people here. What is happening? You put one line closer to the other. You need more. You can put 12 people here. What is happening? Now you are having this corner point. What do you need to do? Can you put one more? And you have this solution. Did you change productivity? No, the slopes are the same. What did you change? You increase the capacity where the capacity had to be increased. Is this the only way you can be able to deal with the case? What do you think? Robert solves the problem this way. I'm not Robert, I'm the dumb Greek and I can solve the problem in a different way. What Robert sees here, in practical sense, he sees that he does not have a lot of resources in wiring. What Robert did, he put more resources to wiring to move that curve up. Is any manager seeing the same problem the same way? No. Another manager may see the problem differently, may see that he, they have a lot of resources in drilling and can deal with a problem in a completely different way. What another person can do, can cut off to half of the drilling point. Why is doing it? Because it's saving cost. But by saving cost, what is happening? We get 220 solution here. Is this the best way? He may think that this is good for him. That's fine. But if another person puts here more resources can get to this case here. We are using something extra. We can go to the mid case. Is this the best way? And my question is, I want to keep the problem simple. What? do I have as a control? As a control, I have the number that comes from this multiplication. That number is how many hours I have available people to work for me. Can I increase or can I decrease these hours in such a way that I can have a solution? Do I want to expand my business? or do I want to contract my business? And this is not a quantitative problem. This is a choice that you want to make with respect to common sense. And you can work both ways. You can expand and you can contract. This is the real problem. That's why I was saying to Stephanie and to Jacqueline, You don't have really to have a computer. You have to think. The computer can make the graph and the computer can give you the solution.
but the computer is making calculations, difficult calculations, complicated calculations. If you put them right, it's going to give you a right answer. If you can put them wrong, it can give you a wrong answer. But the computer does not think. It computes. And you have to do the thinking. The computer does not do the thinking. The computing is like a robot, does whatever is programmed to do. And you have to do what you have to do, which means you have to manage and you have to know the specific reality that you are dealing with. And you have to make decisions. Do you want to contract or do you want to expand? Do you want the solution to move further down or you want to have the solution further up? And you know the answer before you do the solution. A solution here gives you less profit than what you had before. What do you have before? Before you had eight people here and you had 13 people here. The solution here is going to give you more profit because you have more products that you produce and you sell. If you know that, then you go to your computer and you can look for the alternative. And the advantage that you have doing, dealing with quantitative analysis in 2020 is you have really very good software, you have very good computers, and you can be able to do it very fast and very accurately as long as you know what you are doing. Do we know what we are doing is my question. And the answer is no. The textbook that I have is the same thing that I had 20 years ago. Probably I'm using software now to get the solution. But when I get the problem, the problem doesn't say what is the structural issue of the problem. The problem, when I look at it at the book, said solve this problem and find <laughs> out the solution. If this is the case, solve this case and find out the solution. Do I want to increase the solution? Yeah. Let's see what is happening if I have more hours here. If I have more hours here, I can have higher solution. Still, I'm producing only one product. Can I have another solution? What do I do here? I increase the quantity of the hours for wiring. And as I do that, I see that I make changes. From that, I want to see what is happening with that case. What is the advantage? The advantage is that I can be able to play. And as I can play, I can see instantly what is happening with my solution. What is happening with my solution? Model B is increased in production. Profits are going up. Model A doesn't increase anything of the production. Why and how? If I know how to analyze my areas, then I'm able to give a solution to the problems I have. And that's the first big task. What's the biggest task? What's the biggest task? Do I care if you get A in this class or not? I'm moving out of my position as a professor. I'm going back to my position as a manager or as an owner. And I take someone in a managerial position and I have a hotel and Robert is managing. 
do I care if Robert has A in this class or B? Not at all. Do I care if Robert is using Mathematica, Excel, MATLAB, or nothing? Not at all. What do I care? How fast the rooms of the hotel is clean in such a way that I can have the customers going up earlier and I can have higher profit. Can Robert do that? That's what he is there to do as a manager. If Robert is using Mathematica and computer to do that better than everybody else, it's good for him. If he can do it without using Mathematica, I care less. But I care about the essence of the work. What is the next thing I care for? I want Robert to explain to me what is happening in plain English. And I don't want anything about the Mathematica or the linear programming explanation or all. Can Robert tell me what is the problem I'm facing, how he is tackling the problem, and what are the solutions that he is giving me if certain things are happening? And this is something that I'm interested in. Can Robert make the case that is worth it, let's say, for example, to pay more for someone to do the work or cut the cost at a given rate somewhere else? This is my interest and this is robert's task as a manager to communicate with me giving evidence from this particular model that i have here if robert can do it he's gonna be moving up if robert cannot do it and someone else can do it he's gonna face the competition and the competition now is tough and I want from that point to move on and I want to play around with some of the cases and Robert is in my class what Robert wants to do whatever Christine wants to do she wants to play we use the manipulate command so we can play. So what we have as a play, I asked the guy from Vietnam to do the work. The guy from Vietnam went, he did the work. He was looking at what is in the book and he was writing what is in the book. So he said, objective function one, objective function two. Robert knows mathematics. For Robert, objective function has a meaning. But I don't know mathematics and I don't care about what is an objective function, nor I want to know. What do I want to have here? I don't want to see objective function. I want to see Profit per model A. I want to know exactly what is happening. What do I want to do? Instead of objective function one, I will have profit for model A. Why? Because when he is going to solve the problem, I want to see here something that you will control that would show exactly what is happening. By now, can you, can you be able to look at the problem and rename whatever you have here? 
you should be able to do. This is a technical task. Why I want that to be different? Because I want to use it for communication. What do I want to do? I want to put here and I want to see what I have. I want this to be at a given point and I want this to be at the given point. And I want to see what would happen if profit per unit can change and go up and down. And I can open everything and I can see everything what is happening. And I want today to go on and see how things are controlled. What do I have? I want to take that case for a different profit per model one, profit per model B. Do you see how nowadays Mathematica automatically change things in colors? This is a coefficient that I need to have here and I can change product profit for model one and profit for model B. What do I do here is my interest. I have the profit and can go up and can go down. And you took a class in statistics before, and I want to know what is range. And I'm asking tennis, tennis, what is range? Tennis, what is range? Are you hearing me? Now I hear you. Yeah. What is the range? Uh, so the range is the distance between. It's the distance between what just happened. Forget about what just happened. Look at me and tell me what is the range. Okay. I think the range is the distance between, I guess, two. I guess between the lines. You're clear, but not that clear. So Marie, what is range? I'm thinking that the range is similar to what she says, but just considering the restrictions and the constraints that you have within the problem. Good. Every day I get up. After I go to the bathroom and I do everything that I empty, whatever I put in my body from last time, I stay on a scale. And as I stay on the scale, I want to be able by the end of the summer to be less than what I have today. Every day I have one point. How much is my weight the beginning of the day? And I have a range. On one case, I had how much was my weight when it was my maximum. I have on the other range, the range on the other point, how much I want to be. And I don't want to go high, I want to go low, but I defined my weight between what I was and what is my target to be? And I'm seeing what is happening in such a way that I can manage my weight. How do I manage my weight? Every day I eat something. Every day I walk, I bike, I do other things. How many calories I burn, how many calories I put in. I want to see a path that is moving closer to my lowest point that I have as an objective. And I want to know what is the range. I ask the question again. That's Cavoni, what is the range? That's Cavoni, what is the range? That's Cavoni, what is the range? I, um, what is the range? 
don't want this. What do I want? I want to see my line. What is the range? Now, what did I do to get this part here? What is the range? As Calhoun, what is the range? Um, I'm still not too clear on what it is. Fine, take your time. What is the range? You define a range. What is the range? You define a range. What is a range? A range is two numbers. Whenever you define a range, the range should have a given logic from the lowest to the highest. Cannot be anything different. A range can be the same number can be from 15 to 15. Is this a range? Is this a range? Is this a range? That's not a range. That's a point. I make it from a range to be a point. It goes there and it doesn't change. Is this clear? How do you learn? By playing around. What do I want you to do playing around? Make mistakes. What is the range? Is this a range? I solve it. Is this a range? From I 7 to 15. Now you have it in the opposite way. Mathematica is smart and can calculate it. Other software cannot calculate that range. You go from 15 to 17. You see a solution? And I want you to follow the logic of the solution. If the profit per unit increases, then the overall profits go up. Do you see it? You can do the same thing from 15 to 17. What is the range? You solve it. You have it again here. What is happening from 15 to 17? What is the range? A range is when you see two, two points that are limits and what you can be is to operate between these two limits. These two limits can be from the lowest to the highest or from the highest to the lowest. Mathematica can do any way you like it. I think it's better if we can agree always to have it from the lowest to the highest and not any way around. Although, because Mathematica is a smart software, can deal with that issue and can say, okay, we start with this point and we can go down. And I want here to make one thing clear, what Manipulate does. Manipulate solves that problem solves that problem and the problem starts from here and ends up here earlier on in your comments that you have in this file you see what is the logic of solving a problem the problem can be maximized or minimized now we maximize things when we maximize we need an objective function, we have it. But also when we maximize, we mostly need restrictions that they define a ceiling. Restrictions means 
that mostly we need less than equal for the maximization problem. If I want to minimize, I need to have exactly the opposite case. Many times I need to define my variables as being positive because sometimes if I don't do it explicitly, I may have a solution with a negative values. What is a negative value? Negative value may be, for example, if I align, allow model A not to be produced, but to take it from someone else so I can get it from someone else outsourcing it. Someone else is producing it for me. Negative value means what? If I go to Robert's hotel and Robert is completely full and he can say, Professor Adamu, sorry, but you don't mind, we'll put you in the hotel across the street and it's gonna be exactly the same service, exactly the same price, exactly the same quality. And he is using the capacity of the next hotel to do business because the other guy cannot be able to do it. That means that you allow a value to be negative. When and how we can talk about another time. We may, may not have time to talk about it. But when we manipulate, what we actually manipulate, we manipulate the coefficients that are not specific anymore, but they can take a value between two extreme points that they define the range. And when we go on here and we put shift enter and we click it and we have a solution, what we know that the problem solves using values that we have as always the first and go only up to the other value. I click it and I see what is happening. This is how many hours are for total wiring is from 192 to 100, 288. These are the values that we have. And as I have it, what I see, I see that as I move one thing at the time, things change. And in all possible cases here, I can produce different amount of model two that gives me more profit, but I don't produce anything of product one. If I go on and I put more things into drilling, I cannot have any difference. And I don't care what the problem solves or why it solves. I want to go a step further with your thinking. The managerial thinking. Yes, Robert, question. No, I noticed the problem um, had a two, it's like three to one on um wiring and assembly and two to and one uh two to one on drilling so that impacted the way things would turn out correct but everything has impact to what is going on and what is the advantage of the manipulate the advantage of the manipulate is if you can reveal all the numbers here you can be able to start exploring. You can manipulate and you can start exploring. I take the book and I want to read what the book says about the sensitivity analysis. What if things change? And it says only the objective function coefficient on the right hand side can change nothing about the others but that's a productivity. If this is changing, I can put that to change and I can put this to change. I can put this to change 
and I can put this to change. And I can put this to change. But now I go a step above what is in most of my books. In most of my books say one thing can change at the time. Now I have five things changing in a particular relationship they have. And as I see, I observe something. My profits can go up and down from the highest to the lowest point. And if you have that option, you want to go to the combination that gives you the highest profit. Clear. But then I'll go to what you also said. Productivity can also change. And if productivity can change in wiring, packaging, and drilling cases, then everything can change. And if everything can change, things can become either better off or worse off. And I don't want you to do the calculations. That's why you have the computer for it. But I want you to be able to observe, again, a range. What is the highest and what is the lowest you can be able to do? So you can go and focus on that particular point. Is this clear? And I will be like a hunter sitting in that case and go on and click it. And I can put a snapshot of what I think is the best or close to the best. And if this is the best, and I can say at 2200, something like that, I click it and I capture the values that they give me the best solution. But what I want to do before I'm done, and I have only five minutes, I want, let's give rest to the computer to not do any further calculations. Ups. And now I'm in the next problem here. I don't. This is another problem further down. And this is the problem that I had before. All right. This is the problem that I had before. And as I have the problem, I want to focus on what is happening with the range. How do I define the range? How do I define the range? I'll take it. I'll go on. I will put large size. How do I define the range? Marie, there are several ways that I can define the range. I can say this can be from this amount of time that I can do wiring for model one. And this can be the most amount of time. A second way I can define the range is now I go back to statistics. If this is three, if this is three, I can go one hour down and one hour up. A second way to define the range. This is equivalent if I can say my wire can be from two hours to seven hours 
or from two hours to five hours in a specific term. One can be specific. This is three minus one. This is three plus one plus two. I define range explicitly. Now I go on and I ask another question. Did you take statistics, all of you? Or not? Yeah. Marie, what is a bimodal distribution? Bimodal distribution. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, Damien. Bimodal. In my classes, I have students that are around 3.5, but I don't have anyone that is in the C area, and I have a couple students that are around 1.5. I have either students that are at the higher level or at the lower level. Robert can hire people that can be really good, but cannot get anyone who is mediocre. If he finishes hiring all the good people and he needs to get someone extra, the other is really bad. And by model distribution is a distribution that does not have one average, but it's like the letter B, flat up with two curves moving up and down. And by model distribution may be that what I can have is I can have someone that is really bad, takes four hours, and someone who is really good, take one hour. <clears throat> If I do like this, what problem do I have? Do I give a range or not? If I put shift under, do I give a range here or not? Marie, in this statement, do I define a range? Yes. Esther, do I define a range? Actually, no. Um, Good, you're right. You have a point? I have a point. Because the range is yeah. from three to three. And sometimes if I have that, I don't have a range. I do not allow anything to be different. I have from three to three. If I have from three to four, then I have a range. The computers don't think, you think. The computers give you output, outcome based upon what you do. So one way to have a range is explicit from three to four. Another way to define a range is explicit from three and a half to go down one point and from three and a half to go up one point. Now I have symmetrical range. The distribution is within a symmetrical range. I may not have a symmetrical range. I may go in an asymmetry. What does this mean? I can be really good from half hour to four and a half hours. I increase my range, but I increase it non-symmetrical. How do I increase it? Explicitly. Is any other way that I can have impact to the range? What do I have in statistics? I have an estimate, a point estimate that goes up and down. 
if I want to be symmetrical and I want to allow my productivity to go up 10% and go down 10%, what do I need to do? I multiply that with a percentage that decreases it. In other words, allows me to go up 10%. And a percentage that goes up 10%. What do I have now? Again, I define a range. How? Proportionally. Because now I do not increase it up and down given number. I increase it up and down a given percentage. How is that changing? It goes, but it goes symmetrically. From one, I go 10% down, I go 10% up. Is this always the case? No, because Robert as a manager would allow someone who can have higher productivity, can increase the productivity 20%, but decrease the productivity 10%. This is the way he does it. What do you have to do? You have to control and put in numerical information what you actually do in managerial sense. As long as you do it, then you solve the problem. That's the easy way, shift and enter. The problem is solved. As the problem is solved, you have the case here. What did you change? This variable. What is this variable, this one? What do you have? It starts from this point. What is this point? From the estimate three and a half, it goes down 20%. That is 2.2. And it goes up 10%. What is that? You multiply it by an increase of 10%. What do you do? you have a variation of the productivity. Is this important? Is this important? And you say yes. If the productivity is high, you produce more and you have more profit. Do you see it? If the productivity in this case decreases, you produce less and you have less profit. What you change, you change model B. Model A doesn't change. Model B is changing. Model A stays the same. But as model B is produced in different ways, you can do it. Is this really your profit? No, because you cannot produce 62 and a quarter. You can produce only 62. You need to go on and make the calculations. Can you improve it? Yes, you can increase your productivity. How? By what is happening? What if it doesn't go down 20% goes down 10%. That means you increase your productivity only by 10%. Is this anything different? Yes. And this is what I would like you to become familiar and play around. Take the same case. What do I want you to do? I want you to play with numbers. But as you play with numbers here, you do not see the graph. I want you to go further up and see what is happening with the graphs. And I want you to be able to put the two of them together in your mind and be able to explain. We have a simple case. We want to know what is the problem and we, not, we want to know what are the alternatives that we have. And I want you to think in a completely different way than anybody else is thinking. And I want to be 
on the top of the game. Can you do it? Damien says yes. And if Damien says yes, then Kwaku says yes too. And if we can do it in Nigeria, we are going to be on top of the world. Clear? Time is up. Actually, I took seven minutes more. You started late, I finished late. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions, Jacqueline? I feel like I don't completely get it yet, but like you said, I'm just going to practice it. Good. That's what you need to do. Slow down and take it easy. You have the model, you have the software, you have the computer. Try to make sense out of this. What is the lesson that I want to pass to you? Things can change. And as things can change, you need to be in control of what you like to change and you can be able to see 